Welcome to Nursing with Professor B. In today's video, I will be discussing normal vital signs and what are some factors that can affect blood pressure and heart rate. All right, but before we get started, make sure you hit the like button, make sure that you subscribe and make sure you turn on that notification bell. It helps me tremendously and it also helps YouTube rank me higher on the algorithm so that other people that are lost in nursing school can also benefit from my videos. So help them out. All right, let's go. All right, normal vital signs. And there you have my Bitmoji. I want to give a little caveat, okay? When I was looking into this, normal vital signs for pediatric populations are very uh, varied across uh, different websites, different textbooks. One textbook says this, the other says this. So keep that in mind. What there is more of a consensus on is the normal vital signs in adults. But we'll start with the newborns. The normal respiratory rate in newborns is 30 to 60. They have a higher respiratory rate. They do breathe quicker, right? Their normal pulse is between 100 to 170 and their normal blood pressure is 65 over 45. For one to four year olds, their respiratory rate tends to be 20 to 40 per minute. Their pulse tends to be between 70 to 110 beats per minute. And their blood pressure tends to be 90 over 55. For children between five to 12 years old, their respiration rate tends to be between 16 to 22 per minute. Their normal pulse tends to be between 60 to 95. And normal blood pressure tends to be 100 over 60. For adults, the normal respiratory rate is 12 to 20. Normal heart rate or pulse tends to be 60 to 100 beats per minute. And the normal blood pressure is uh, ideal is less than 120 over 80. Factors influencing respirations, fever, anxiety, people that are anxious tend to breathe quicker and slower than maybe they hyperventilate and then they end up passing out. Um, certain medications or disease processes. So for example, if someone is in metabolic acidosis, they may compensate by breathing out CO2 to make themselves get rid of acid to be a little bit more alkalytic. So certain disease processes. Factors influencing blood pressure, cardiac output, um, anxiety again, medications. Some medications can raise blood pressure. Some medications can lower blood pressure. How elastic the arteries are. What is the resistance, peripheral vascular resistance? Is blood volume, how much blood do you have in your system? Are you, if you've lost a lot of blood, right? Then your blood pressure is gonna be low because you don't have enough volume flowing through that hose, right? Blood viscosity, how thick is the blood? Doesn't it make sense that if something is really thick, it's harder to push? right versus if the blood is nice and viscous and it flows easily if the blood is very viscous then it just kind of doesn't flow as well um, age how young or old people are we just saw that in the a previous slide if you're younger like a newborn the blood pressure is lower um, weight people that are overweight tend to have higher blood pressure not everybody but that does tend to be a risk factor and in fact the number one thing that you can usually do, a lot of people say, oh, cut out salt from your diet. A lot of physicians or healthcare providers will say it, but really they've done studies that limiting salt intake doesn't do as much as maybe dropping, even if it's 10% of your weight, um, that does tremendous more for your blood pressure than limiting salt intake. And exercising, right? If you exercise, you do tend to have what exercise does, it increases arterial elasticity because when you're exercising, you're pumping more blood through your system. You're making your heart work better. So by, by making your system work harder, you're making your system in effect more efficient while at rest. So if you don't exercise, your blood pressure tends to be higher. If you do, it tends to be lower. Factors influencing heart rate and your rhythm. Again, medications, right? If, you, if anyone has ever had an, a nebulizer treatment or used an albuterol inhaler, that makes your heart beat a lot faster, um, makes you super jittery and your heart beat faster. Pathophysiology, if you have hyperthyroidism, that's gonna increase your heart rate. If you're on beta blockers, which I just recorded another video today on beta blockers, by the way, this is like my fourth video recording. I'm doing like mass recording on one day. Um, hence why I'm wearing like the same dress in four videos. But anyways, so medications like beta blockers slow your heart rate down, whereas medications like theophylline increase your heart rate. Exercise, again, super fit athletes, their heart rate could be in the 40s. 
gender. Are you male, female? Um, how old are you? Um, pathology, temperature. If you're in the, the sun and the heat and you're losing a lot of water, you, your body just tends to start speeding up. Um, your blood pressure also affects your heart rate. Think about it, if your blood pressure drops, then your heart rate has to pick up in order for to be to, in order for enough blood to be available in your body your heart rate has to pump faster because there's not enough blood i gotta pump but if you have enough fluid if you're well hydrated then your blood your heart rate can go at a more steady state because there's enough fluid enough volume filling um, all your needs your tissue perfusion needs serum electrolytes can affect heart rate and rhythm potassium is a huge one right all of the big ones, um, but um, pot potassium can can cause arrhythmias if you're too hyperkalemic, if you're hypokalemic. And this is a cute, isn't this a cute lady? She's so cute, look at that. She's so cute. I really like this picture. Um, photo by Carvalho. I wonder if he's Brazilian. That tends to be a Brazilian last name. Anyways, gerontologic considerations. I, eu falo um pouco de português, so yes, I speak um, English, Spanish, and a little bit of Portuguese and a little bit of French. Parlez-vous français? Anyways, so uh, gerontologic considerations. The elderly do tend to have an increased systolic blood pressure. That means that their top number tends to be a little higher. Why? Because as they get older, their arteries aren't as elastic. They lose that arterial elasticity. There, there may be a possible decrease in diastolic blood pressure. Diastolic is your bottom number. And a widened pulse pressure. And what a widened pulse pressure is, there's, it's the difference between your systolic and your diastolic number. And that is not good. A wide, widened pulse pressure is associated with increased mortality. As as nurses, at least for me, when I was in med tele, um, you know, we worried a lot about the systolic blood pressure, but that's why if a physician or a nurse practitioner or a, a, a physician assistant ever asks you about pulse pressure or if they're concerned about the widened pulse pressure, that's why, because it could be an indicator of uh, that they're more susceptible to increase mortality. Thank you so much for watching. Like I said before, make sure you hit the like button, make sure that you subscribe and make sure you turn on that notification bell. Oh, and join my Facebook group, Nursing with Professor B. Mm -hmm.